is Akhil Dev, Senior Chemistry Faculty, Narayana Hyderabad. Today I will be discussing the solutions to memory based questions of JE Main held on 6th April 2023, the shift 1 paper, Chemistry. The first question is a question from Chemical Equilibrium. We have to predict an expression of degree of dissociation alpha in terms of the equilibrium constant and concentration, initial concentration. We will first write the dissociation reaction A2B3 dissociating to give 2A3 plus and 3B2 minus. If the initial concentration is C and degree of dissociation is alpha, the concentrations at equilibrium can be written as C into 1 minus alpha, 2C alpha and 3C alpha. Here we can use one approximation, 1 minus alpha as approximately equal to 1. This approximation is valid when alpha is small. And using that approximation, we will get an expression of K equilibrium in terms of alpha and concentration. And alpha comes out to be K equilibrium by 108 C to the power 4 whole to the power 1 by 5. Hence, first option will be the correct answer. That's an easy question, straightforward question from chemical equilibrium. Now, let's move to the next question. Now, this is a question from atomic structure. Radius of first orbit of hydrogen is given and we have to find out radius of fifth orbit of Li2+. plus. We know that radius is proportional to n square by z and n square by z for hydrogen is 1. First orbit of hydrogen is 1. So the radius of fifth orbit of lithium will be radius of first orbit of hydrogen into n square by z. Value of n, fifth orbit is 5 and atomic number for lithium is 3. So 5 square by 3, it comes out to be 425 picometer. The answer for this question will be 425 picometer. This is also an easy question. Based on this formula, radius is proportional to n square by z. Now, let us move on to the next question. This is a question from stoichiometry. How many moles of barium phosphate will be formed by the reaction of 5 moles of barium chloride and 3 moles of sodium phosphate? Stoichiometry question based on limiting reagent. 5 moles of barium chloride, 3 moles of sodium phosphate. We will find out the limiting reagent. To find out the limiting reagent, we will divide the moles by stoichiometric coefficient. Number of moles divided by stoichiometric coefficient. 5 by 3 is 1.67, 3 by 2 is 1.5. 1.5 is smaller than 1.67. Therefore, sodium phosphate is the limiting reagent. From the limiting reagent, we will calculate the number of moles of barium phosphate form. Number of moles of barium phosphate form will be half of the number of moles of sodium phosphate that is equal to 3 by 2 the correct answer will be 3 by 2 1.5 the answer is 3 by 2 now let's move on to the next question In which of the following pair of elements, electron gain enthalpy difference is the highest? If you look at the options, the options include one halogen and one noble gas. Chlorine has the most negative delta H Eg, whereas among the noble gases, neon has the most positive delta H Eg. The difference between the most negative and most positive delta H Eg will be the maximum. The correct answer will be chlorine and neon. That is the second option. Now let us move on to the next question. A question from solid state. In an ionic solid, Y crystallizes in CCP lattice, CCP lattice or FCC lattice. X occupies one third of tetrahedral void. So normally we say that tetrahedral void is twice the number of particles. The formula should be X to Y, but only one third of tetrahedral void is occupied to X2 by 3Y, which comes out to be X2 Y3. The formula of the solid will be X2 Y3. It's also an easy question. Now let us move on to the next question. This question from equilibrium thermodynamics of equilibrium, the value of log k, the equilibrium constant, log of equilibrium constant we have to calculate, delta h is given, delta s is given. We'll directly apply the equation delta g naught is equal to minus rt ln k. Delta g naught is equal to delta H naught minus T delta S naught. We will first find out the value of delta G naught from delta H and delta S values. We will calculate delta G naught. And once delta G naught is calculated, we can write delta G naught is minus RT ln K, which can be simplified as minus 2.303 RT log K. Now just we need to put the values and putting the values will get log K is equal to 10. So answer will be 10. Now let us move on to the next question.
a question from solutions and colligative properties uh, the determine the amount of urea required to be added to 1000 grams of water to decrease its vapor pressure by 25 percent we can say that delta p by p naught is equal to 1 by 4 vapor pressure decreases by 25 percent or we can also write or we can also write delta p upon p s is equal to 1 by 3 delta p upon p s is 1 by 3 and this is equal to delta p upon p s is moles of solute upon moles of solvent the moles of urea upon moles of water we will solve it 1 by 3 is equal to moles of urea <coughs> to find out the mass of urea let us write it as m molar mass of urea is 60 moles of water will be 1000 by 18 from here if we solve this expression we will get <coughs> m is equal to 1 by 3 into 1000 by 18 into 60 this comes out to be 20,000 by 18 grams 20,000 by 18 grams further simplifying the expression it will become 10,000 by 9 grams which is equal to 111 1.11 grams the correct answer is 111. 1, 1 grams. Now let us move on to the next question. This question is from S block which the following slows down the process of setting of cement. Gypsum is often added to cement which slows down the process of setting of cement and it increases the hardness of the set cement. So gypsum answer will be gypsum. Now let us move on to the next question. Number of ambidentate ligands in the complex MEN, SCN, hole 4. Ambidentate ligands are those ligands in which coordination can occur through either of two possible different donor sites. Thiocyanate, SCN is an ambidentate ligand which can coordinate from either sulfur or nitrogen atom. Both sulfur or nitrogen, either sulfur or nitrogen can act as donor atoms. So, how many ambidentate ligands are present? There are four ambidentate ligands present in this complex. The answer will be four. Now let us move on to the next question. Next question is a question from this reaction. This reaction is used in extraction of gold from its native ores. It's the cyanide process, the second step of the cyanide process. It's a displacement reaction as well as a redox reaction. The correct answer will be A and B, both redox reaction and displacement reaction. An easy question. Moving on to the next question. It's a assertion statement type question, assertion reason type question. Assertion is given as spin only magnetic moment of FeCN63 minus is 1.73 and that of FeH2 whole 63 plus is 5.92. We know that cyanide is a strong ligand which results in pairing resulting in only one unpaired electron in FeCN63 minus whereas H2O behaves as a weak ligand resulting in presence of five unpaired electrons. Uh, reason is given as both cases Fe has plus three oxidation state. Yes, this is correct. But this is not the correct explanation for the above statement. Correct explanation would have been cyanide is a strong ligand and H2 is a weak ligand. The correct answer will be both statements are correct. But second statement reason is not the correct explanation of assertion. Now let us move on to the next question. Again a statement based question. Radius of H plus is 1.5 into 10 to the minus C. This is approximately the correct value. This statement is correct. H plus cannot exist independently. This statement is also correct. But this is not a correct explanation. H plus because of its extremely small size cannot exist independently. It often exists in aqueous solutions where it is coordinated with water molecules. Fine. Both statements are correct but reason is not the correct explanation of assertion. Now next question. Oxidation number of molybdenum in ammonophosphomolybdate complex. This complex is formed in the test of phosphate ions. And the color of this precipitate obtained is a bright yellow or canary yellow precipitate the composition can be written as either of the two equations if we look at the formula nh4 whole 3 po4 this part of the substance is neutral consider considering only moo3 will get oxidation number of molybdenum as plus 6 so answer will be 6 oxidation number of molybdenum in this compound will be plus 6 now moving on to the next question which of the following are reducing and oxidizing agents respectively? These are <coughs> lanthanides, the common oxidation state is plus 3, 
Europium plus 2 tends to get oxidized to plus 3, the Europium plus 2 gets oxidized, it's a good reducing agent. Whereas cerium plus 4 tends to get reduced, it's a good oxidizing agent. The good reducing and oxidizing agent respectively will be EU2 plus and CE4 plus. First option will be the correct answer. Fine. Now moving on to the next question. Question from P block, we can say also from chemical bonding regarding structures of nitrogen oxides. N2O5 has a NON bond, so P matches with 2 NON bond in N2O5. N2O has a triple bond or a double bond. We can draw two resonating structures, one resonating structure having triple bond, one resonating structure having double bond. N2O4 has a nitrogen-nitrogen single bond and NO2 has a nitrogen-oxygen double bond. The answer will be P matches with 2, Q matches with 3, R matches with 1 and S matches with 4. Fine. Now let us move on to the next question. Polymer which is named as Orlon. Orlon or Acrylon or Artificial Wool is another name for Polyacrylonitrite. A question from Polymers chapter. Now moving on to the next question. Now question from Organic Chemistry. The first reaction is a Hoffman bromamide reaction where amide converts into an amine. The amine formed will react with ester giving a substitution reaction resulting in formation of another amide. A cyclic amide is formed as the final product. Correct answer will be the second option. The first reaction is the Hoffman bromide reaction and next step is attack of the amine formed on the ester a nucleophilic acyl substitution resulting in formation of a cyclic secondary amide. Fine. Now let us move on to the next question. A question from biomolecules regarding vitamins and their deficiency diseases. <coughs> vitamin A, vitamin C, thiamine, riboflavin. Thiamine is vitamin B1 and riboflavin is vitamin B2. Vitamin A deficiency results in xerophthalmia. Vitamin A, 1 matches with C. Vitamin C results in scurvy, 1 C and 2D, 1 C, 2D and then <coughs> riboflavin results in, thiamine results in, one is beriberi and one is, one minute, deficiency of thiamine B1 results in beriberi and deficiency of riboflavin results in kilosis. So, one matches with C, two matches with D, one C, two D, three matches with B. The correct answer will be 1C, 2D, 3B and 4A, second option. Second option will be the correct answer. A little bit memory based question. We need to know the uh, diseases corresponding to which vit deficiency of which vitamin. Then we will, be, we will be able to answer this question. Now let us move on to the next question. Photochemical smog is mainly found in industrial areas where we have uh, nitrogen oxides present in the exhaust, nitrogen oxides, hydrocarbons. Uh, ozone etc these are important and these actually result in they react uh, with ozone present in the atmosphere and result in formation of photochemical smog so the photochemical smog is found predominantly in the industrial area now moving on to the next question uh, question based on enzymes enzyme catalyzed reaction glucose is fermented to give ethanol and co2 the enzyme responsible is gymase the one matches with c sucrose giving glucose for fructose this is Inversion of sucrose, the enzyme responsible is invertase, starch to maltose, enzyme responsible is diastase and protein to amino acids, enzyme responsible is pepsin. So one matches with C, two matches with D, one matches with C, two matches with D and three matches with B. The correct answer will be the first option. Now let us move on to the next question. How many bromo products are formed when ethane is heated with excess of bromine on heating? Again a question from organic chemistry, bromination of ethane, total number of products they are asked, they are not asked monobromo, dibromo, we will consider all possible products. It can form monobromo product, dibromo product, two different dibromo products will be obtained, two different tribromo products will be obtained, we can get two different tetrabromo products also, one pentabromo and one hexabromo total number of products will be nine so total nine different bromo products can be obtained when ethane is heated with excess of bromine now moving on to the next question now this is again a question from organic chemistry where the reaction is given and we have to identify the name of the reaction first reaction carboxylic acid react with phosphorus and bromine it is a hell volatile reaction alpha halogenation reaction next reaction 
acetone reacted with NaOI, iodoform reaction, methyl ketone reaction of methyl ketones. And then third reaction, benzene reacted with COHCl, LCL3, formation of benzaldehyde, Gatterman Koch reaction. So one matches with two, one matches with Q, two matches with R, and three matches with P, Q, R, P. Correct answer will be the first one. Now moving on to the next question. This is again a question from organic chemistry. Bromoethane reacted with sodium iodide in acetone, giving iodoethane and sodium bromide the Finkelstein reaction. The driving force for this reaction is sodium bromide is insoluble in acetone, sodium iodide is soluble in acetone. The answer will be second option. Now moving on to the next question. Question from organic chemistry. This is acetanilide. Acetanilide on reduction with lithium aluminium hydride. Amides are reduced to amines. Amides are reduced to amines. And with bromine and acetic acid, it will result in parabromination. The correct answer will be the third option. The second product is parabrominated product. And the first product is a secondary amine. Where uh, amides are reduced to amines by lithium aluminium hydride. Now moving on to the next question. That's it. These were the solutions to memory based questions of 6th April paper shift 1.